Let's look at some of the items that are selling extremely well right this very minute for us. Hey, it's Don. Today we're going to look at some of those items we routinely sell for some good money. These items are selling very well right this very second in through the summer and it doesn't drop off from here. Military for us sells constantly. Military is one of those categories that sells no matter what time of year it is, holidays or anything mean nothing. Sometimes you may sell a little more for somebody buying something for a friend or family or something. But overall, I can sell it all year round without worrying about a drop off. I don't price it low at one time of the year or price it high another time. It's passive income. It just sits there until it sells. Now this one I took 40 bucks shipped on this one here. It's been in my inventory for a little while. I think we initially spent like 10 or 12 bucks on a stack of these at a sale somewhere. They didn't realize that they were as old as they show. These are from the 1890s. So excellent sale on that behalf. It shows a very interesting scene of Massachusetts infantry. Now, a horrendously good category of items are anything by Raphael Tuck. I do extremely well with these Raphael Tuck die cuts. It's cut out around the design as well. Raphael Tuck was the main maker of all of these sorts. They would be issued in a little packet, and sometimes there would be two of them hooked together in one sheet. And there would be multiple sheets in each one of these. I actually have the packet or had the packet for this one here. Now, I sold a whole bunch of these to someone from Norway. A whole bunch of these, like three. $300 worth. Each one of these went for around 35 to 40 bucks a piece. I've got maybe a dollar or two into them. They are nice items and they routinely sell in this price range for us. Here's another one. Same basic principle. This one sold for basically 40 bucks as well to the same person. Shipped together. I sold, as I said, a whole bunch of these around $300 worth. All in the same day, all to the same person extremely good items very hot items right this minute there's been a ton of new collectors of Raphael Tuck these days usually I sell multiples of the Raphael Tuck like this so they do extremely well for us across the board again another one to the same person 40 bucks straight on out now, photos, 8x10 photos that were produced by the movie studios to advertise movies. Those do extremely well for us. This is Anthony Hopkins. This one did sell for full price, $34.50. It's from the Mayflower. Uh, a lot of these are from like CBS and TV presentations of these movies as well. As long as they're legit, I don't mind selling them. Whether they're from a TV presentation with the TV side notes uh, attached to them or a studio one with studio marks on them. Either way, as long as they're legit I don't mind selling him and they do extremely well now here's Tex Beneke. He's a sax player. Um, I think he's a big band director as well. Very well known. I've had records by him also. Sold for $19.99 plus shipping on it. Now I've got almost nothing into this. We bought about 1,200 publicity stills from a newspaper that was having an auction. They were liquidating a warehouse and that's where these sorts of things show up the most. If you search your newspaper, Craigslist, or even some of the like property notices and things like that, sometimes you can run into these sorts of things in mass bulk quantity. It's going to take you targeting these specifically though to find them. Now this next one here is an advertising postcard for a musical group, the Vagabonds. This is from a supper club in Miami. They had records out in the whole works, but they also performed stationary at one specific place in Miami, and this is an advertising card from there. I've slowly whittled these out by putting one up at a time, and they sell fairly well. This one did sell for $14.50 plus shipping. Again, it's just a postcard that I bought a stack of. Many times I'll run into a stack of something. Many people will sell it for much cheaper because they know there's mass quantity of them. So if you're able to hold on to these and just list one at a time, you can make a lot more money out of something like this. Now, I was in no hurry whatsoever to try and sell them all at once. I listed one at a time and I added some. Sometimes I didn't list them for a month or two and then I relisted it. Now, there's a ton of fishing tackle collectors and they like pretty much anything tied to it, especially like a place that's near them or a place that used to exist that sold a specific type or maybe was the manufacturer of of the items. Now this is for a very specific fishing tackle maker. Now this one sold for $57.50 as well as several other ones related to this exact same place. Now knowing that it's tied to fishing tackle, paying attention to what it's written on, is why I got more money than almost anybody
somebody else selling these exact same cards. So 5750, excellent sale on that one. Another one from the very same place, another 5750. This person bought almost $300 as well. I think it was 11 cards all told total. They either showed a scene of fishing on it or they sold fishing tackle, the items that were related to it. They're not all trade cards. I think there was some postcards and other items in there also. Now, condition is obviously important, but many times I can still sell damaged or items with issues for some decent money. Now, this has been up for a little while. I actually got this from a damaged card lot at a sale. It was the leftovers that no one thought would sell for anything, and I paid like a quarter a piece for this. Now, this one did go for $32.50 plus shipping, so that type of money out of something like this is just fine. You can see some damage it has at the very top edge of the card. It's been around the block. There's some creases and other other issues with it but it's still sold extremely well now a great area for us are old military uniform style buttons like this one here this one dates to the 1860s I've had quite a few of these every one now has sold for 75 bucks or better it's a nice early one you can surely tell the age by the marking style the impression and how it's written on the back of the button it's a fire department button these go way back I've seen fire department buttons all the way back to around 1820 now, investment-wise, we've spent probably around twelve or thirteen thousand dollars in buttons. Just these types of buttons here, uniform buttons, vintage ones, and that equates to hundreds of pounds, hundreds of thousands of individual buttons as well. Now, we've already paid for them with the buttons we've sold out of this lot. We've also only listed maybe four or five percent of all what we have. So at this point, all of these buttons are all profit. So profit, seventy-five bucks less the fees, obviously, on this one. Another one here, this is one that sold for 85 bucks plus shipping. Obviously, fees would come out of that. Again, it's all profit, though. I pay eBay. Every other dime of that comes right back into my pocket to do whatever I need to with it. So, again, these are routine sales for us. 40 bucks, 39.99. this one went for, plus shipping also. An excellent sale. It's a smaller size button, cuff size even. So size doesn't always even matter on them, as long as they're scarce and rare. This one's a raised mark in a depressed channel. This one's an 1850s button, and that's why it sold for decent money. Another one. Now, this is from a department store, as you see here, from New York City. McCreary. Now, the last name of the person who bought this is the very same last name is that's on this button here. And it sold for 50 bucks plus shipping. So as long as you're willing to invest the time into researching what these are and coming up with an accurate price, you can make a ton of money on these things. The biggest reason people don't make good money on buttons like this is they don't spend the time and they don't know how to research them properly. Most of the time spent on these sorts of items is going to be spent on finding it, researching the places to find this, and then second, researching the price and what these are. If you didn't know or didn't spend some time looking, you wouldn't know what this was from. You wouldn't know that this this was a department store in New York. Now, odd and unique buttons, things that don't show up, obviously sell for more money than this, the common old item. This is Republic of Peru. It's an army officer's button. I got 45 bucks plus shipping out of this. This same person bought, I think, every one of the Peru buttons that we had up. These are fine examples of these sorts of things that you can run into. Not knowing what they are, not knowing how to read what's on the back and date it is going to be an issue for a lot of people. Again, it comes back down to you spending your time on research properly. A lot of these items I can may find in a five-minute search or something at a mall or something, but it may take me 10 or 15 minutes to source down what it is and to price it correctly. That's all part of the game in these sorts of items. And one last example, this is a Dakota Territory. This is before there was a North and a South Dakota. There was just Dakota Territory. And this Dakota National Guard, this is a staff officer button from 1870s or 80s. This one sold for $37.50 on an offer I sent to a watcher. Very happy with it. I've got several more of this very same one. Again, these are all profits from this point on on all of the uniform buttons that I've been showing. Total profit. This is how you do it. You buy mass bulk. You get some items that are high dollar. You sell those first. You get your money back. And then you move on and just start listing what you wish to from those lots, the higher dollar stuff, and keep it going from there. We list new ones every single week, routinely, day in and day out. These are routinely listed, as is most of our other items that we have up. That's the way to keep business coming in as well. It keeps interest. It keeps everybody knowing that you're adding new items. They're going to want to keep seeing what you've got. It 
builds up watchers to your store, those who favorite your store. So anyway, that's what I have for you today. Well, hopefully that gave you some ideas, some thoughts. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified if I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell all your friends. But digital took the mystery out of computers. Digital Equipment Corporation pioneered the mini computer, making compact, easy to use systems that can grow with your business. From your independent digital supplier, you can get hardware and software from one source without any hocus pocus. Digital, we took the mystery out of computers.